Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And sitting here having my Trump coffee. Haven't had Trump coffee in almost a week. <laughs> Today's my first day of getting back to it. I've uh, been having some heartburn issues or acid reflux, and I thought this was the culprit, and it probably is, but it sure is worth the pain to know that I've got good Trump coffee in my belly. Anyway, you guys go get your coffee, and I'll wait for you. Are you back yet? Anyway. Pause the video if you haven't. I would like to talk about this culprit right here. The S45 magazine. Yes, I have a S45 magazine, but I don't have an S45. And I have been following for a long time the issue that people are having with the magazines being broke and parts of them flying out and hitting people in the face. And what brought this video on is a post that I've seen this evening that I thought it was time to say something about these uh, magazines. Number one, there's nothing wrong with these magazines. This magazine is not the culprit. This is not the reason that your magazines are blowing up. Now, let's talk about them reasons. Number one, the reason these are breaking is because some of these air gunners seem to have it in their head that the tighter the pellet or the slug the better it shoots. Wrong, 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 wrong. Can't be no further th from the truth. You have to size your barrel. In other words, what I mean, and I will put a link to how to slug your barrel. I seen a guy who did a very good video on how to slug it, and if I can find it, I'll put it in the link. If it ain't in the link, just go into YouTube and type in how to slug your barrel. And there's several of them up that will show you how to do it. Some of them are okay, some of them are not. But that is the number one thing. If you're having a problem with magazines blowing up, that is the number one thing that you need to do to make sure that you get the appropriate slug for your barrel. Every barrel is different. Every single one of them. It doesn't matter if you have a hundred S45s. Not one of those barrels are going to be exact. Not one of them. And if you care to prove me wrong, I dare you to do so. Because it's, if you find that I'm wrong, you're still wrong. Because every barrel is different. It doesn't matter. Every machine works different. They never work the same exact. There's always going to be a variation in your barrel and what the bore size is and your rifling. All of them's different. So if, as long as you got that in your head, you're going to understand the rest of what I'm telling you. When you slug your barrel, that slug is going to tell you what size slug you need to run in that barrel. And then you mic it, not with a caliper, but with a mic. If you don't have a mic, don't even bother trying, because you're going to be wrong. Um, I, I'm getting tired of people posting that the magazine is the issue when it is not the issue. I've seen other guns that do the same thing, and it's because somebody shot too big a slug in their barrel and what happens is when that slug goes in that barrel it can get through the first part but you got to remember the barrel is smaller than the slug 
you can't do that. When it goes in there and you go to fire, that air is not enough power to run that slug up that barrel. So where does the air go? It goes to the path of least resistance, which is the magazine. You're talking plastic. It has no place to go but through the magazine. When it goes through the magazine, that 3600 PSI or 4000 PSI, whatever it is that you may be running in your gun, it's going to come back and it's going to break the part that's sticking out of the breech off and it's going to go into your face. And yes, you're probably either going to go blind if you don't wear glasses and or leave yourself a nice uh, scar to carry around with you for the rest of your life simply because you didn't do your research. Now, if any of these mags break, it's because of that one reason. Your slug is too big for the barrel. Get that through your head, guys. The slug is too big for the barrel, and when... It's, it's like trying to uh, stuff a basketball in a straw. It ain't gonna happen. Something's gonna give. You're gonna get tired of trying to squish that thing through the... Uh, straw and you're going to give up. Well, the mags give up. So, <clears throat> remember that guys. Slug your barrels because just because it says 45 caliber or 50 caliber and I'll give you a perfect example. My 357, well that's not the 357. My 357 it says 0.357 on the side of it. It is not a 357. It's a 356 or a 353. Either one will work just fine. It's too tight because the barrels are not true. They're not all exactly the same. You might get away with it with one gun where you can't get away with, with it with another gun. So, my 50 cal, my M50, yes, it says 0 .50 on the side of it. It is not a 0 .50. It's four thousandths or five thousandths less than a 0 .50. So, it is a 495 caliber. So, that's true with every gun on the planet. Now, yes, if you're firing a firearm, you can get away with that oversized slug. It's got the power to push it up the barrel. But we're talking about air. There's only but so much you can get out of air in any case whatsoever. So you're expecting too much out of the air and the equipment for not getting your stuff correct. So when you slug your barrels and you mic them, then you look for the appropriate slug. You don't adapt your barrel to the slug. It's not gonna happen, it's steel. You have to adapt your slug to the barrel. Most people do it backwards and every time they end up with face scars because they're not doing their research. And people can argue with me till they're blue in the face. I stick to my guns on this. It's not the magazine's problem. It's not the gun's problem. The gun's working correctly. You're not putting the right slug or pellet through that gun. So anybody who wants to argue this, they're gonna argue till the cows come home and they're always going to be right, no matter whether they're wrong or right anyway. So, this is just, I'm just going to say that this is my opinion. But I stand by my opinion. Alright, so now that we've got the slug being too big for the barrel as the problem, we have another problem. 
you got way too many people out there trying to make a quick buck by going and buying a mold and making slugs and selling them to people and they're bragging them up they're they're they got real good advertisement they they succeed in advertisement that's about the only thing they're good at advertisement because the pellets and the slugs that they are making now you can get away with that with a pellet because you only have, and I'll try to show you what I mean. I'll get the biggest one here and show you what I mean. On a slug, the only thing that's actually touching the barrel is the edge of this skirt and the edge of this round part right here. And it's very slight. So there's not much against the barrel. So yes, you can get away with the oversized pellet. I wouldn't recommend it but you can get away with it. However, a slug, look at all the surface area here. You got probably four millimeters of surface area here. You got another four millimeters of surface area here. Then you've got this edge right here, which I would say maybe a millimeter is gonna be flattened when you put it through the barrel. You're talking four, eight, nine millimeters of surface area, which means it's going to be harder going up through the barrel than what you would have on a slug because you've only got maybe a millimeter here, maybe a millimeter here. It's probably more or less than a millimeter or more like a less, but you have less to surface area for friction. Basically, that's what it is, friction. The more friction you put in there, the harder it's going to be to go down the barrel. So, what these guys are doing, and it's not all the slug guys. Some guys do their research. They ask questions to all these air gunners and uh, companies and get measurements and... Uh, they pay more attention to the people who slug their barrels to get the correct size. I'll give you an example. Ray over at KRS. When, when we're designing a slug, or when he's designing a slug, I've only helped him design one, and that we're still waiting on that one. But we are actually doing our research. I slugged my 50 cal barrel and that's how I got the measurement for what size slug that he needed to order the mold for. So I go and slug my barrel, I give him the measurements, then he goes and orders the mold, then he gets the resizer to make sure that they're correct before he sends them to his customers. Not all slug makers do that. They go buy a mold. They didn't do their research. They're molding these things that are oversized and calling them a 50 cal or a 357 or a 30 cal or a 25. You get the picture. When they sell them to the customer, the customer blows their magazine apart and then they're like, well, the magazine's the problem. No, no, sir. The magazine is not the problem. You're running the wrong slug. I, I, I'd like to try to find a better example to, to try to get you guys to understand what's actually happening. But you can't just go to any slug man and say, oh, well, that's 50 cal. Mine says 50 cal, so it's going to work. No, no, sir. No, sir. Or ma'am, whichever the case may be, that would be wrong. You've got to slug your barrel, especially when it comes to these big bores. These big bores are extremely dangerous when it comes to that kind of air pressure. When you're shooting a 22, you can pretty much, on a 22 or a 177 or a, a 25 caliber, yeah. One size fits all, just about. You never have that problem. But when you start getting into these big bores, the, the, the size of that slug matters considerably. 
it's everything to shooting accurately and efficiently. So when you're out there shop, shopping for a slug, make sure that you know what the guy is doing. Ask around. Research that company. Research the person who's making that slug because that slug makes all the difference in the world of how your gun's going to shoot. It's either going to make you unhappy or it's going to make you happy. I would venture to say you want to be happy, right? No holes in your face. No blood coming out of your face. I understand. I would be pissed too if my magazines kept breaking. But the fact remains, it's not the magazine that's the problem. It is not the gun that is the problem. It's not even the air pressure that's the problem. It's the slug that is causing this to happen. So, if you don't believe me, ask around. Talk to a, a professional. If you don't think I'm a professional, I'm a machinist. I know how metal works. I know how air works. You know, I've worked on just about every damn thing in the sun. I know what I'm talking about. I know physics. I know how things work what makes them work, and what makes them work better, what makes them work worse. And, you know, I'm, I'm not just looking at something. I'm actually inside of something. So when I'm thinking of the slug going down the barrel, I'm not thinking of the slug going down the barrel. I'm actually in the barrel watching it from inside because I know what the inside of it looks like. I know what the slug looks like. I'm actually inside there. I'm, I'm actually... OCD. So <laughs> I go way too far into detail and I will drive myself nuts because I know way too much about what's going on inside that gun. And it drives me nuts that I can't actually get my mind out there for you guys so you can see what I see. But I'm telling you what I see the best way I know how. And I see that the magazine is not the problem. I have one here right now that has very good spring to it and yes it's a hefty spring so we know that that part's correct now another issue with these magazines that people are having is and I can see this happening a lot this spring is stiff stiffer than I was on the first time I ever had sex and uh, if you was to slip and that thing was to flip back real sudden, yes, it's going to pop the spring out of the hole, which is going to mean you're going to have to take this screw out, take everything out, put it back to where it was, and then just try not to let it go again. That's why I made the S45 uh, magazine tool and the, uh, well, magazine tool. The uh, bolt holder is a different tool. But uh, keep that in mind, guys. The key to a proper slug is slugging your barrel. And if you don't know how to slug your barrel, find somebody that does know how to slug your barrel. Uh, find a professional to do it. Even if you've got to send that gun out, it's worth it, guys. It's worth it to spend that extra money to send that gun, have it slugged, find out what size slug you need. That way, once you get it back, you get the right slug for your gun, and then go from there. You will be a happy shooter from then on. I promise you, if you do that step of slugging your barrel and getting the correct slug for your barrel, you will be a happy shooter. So, I know this sounds like I'm ranting, but I'm not. I'm just trying to explain to you guys that, you know, there's a right way to do things, and there's a wrong way to do things, and there's too many people out there trying to convince other people that don't know that you have to do these steps to make sure that, especially in an air rifle, it's, it's more true for an air rifle than anything firearm you can get away with just about anything with them because it's got enough power to push that thing up to 
through the barrel. Not to mention, you don't have something like this that can blow back in your face. Uh, now, yes, there is a such thing as getting too big of a slug for a firearm. That's why breeches blow apart. And I've seen it happen in several videos. It's not a good thing. Uh, it will send you to the hospital. And these are no different. They will send you to the hospital and may blind you in one eye. Uh, so you got to practice safety. And safety is knowing your gun, knowing what your gun is capable of doing, getting the right slug is key in a nutshell so remember this guys slug your barrel find a reputable slug seller and there's several of them out there but there's also several of them there's probably more bad uh, slug makers than there are good slug makers uh, you know Mr. Hollow Point KRS, uh, NSA, you know, these have, these guys have been around for, for years. You know, they know what they're doing because they do their research. And if the person who's making your ammo don't do their research, you're not going to be happy. So remember that guys. And also remember to have your Trump coffee before you go shooting. It'll make you accurate. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys to understand what's going on with those magazines and maybe help you guys to understand what you need to do to keep that from happening. Uh, and even if it doesn't blow up your magazine, that's still the best idea in the world for a big bore to slug your barrel to get your correct diameter. That's why they have so many different diameters of slugs. You know, not every 357 is going to shoot a 357. Some of them may even shoot a 359. Some of them may shoot a 356. You know, it, it just depends on what your slug tells you when you pull it out of that barrel after you slug it. So, anyway. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. You guys have a wonderful day and happy shooting. Later.